I skewered the bodies of the invaders and scattered them about the surrounding countryside as a horrible warning to potential future enemies. I shuddered at my own action, but it spoke to the barbarians in a language that they understood. The strategy worked. Enemies lost their fighting spirit and retreated at the grisly sight of my signposts of death. Okay, this one is going to take some explaining. We are talking Tomb of Dracula, also known as Dracula, also known as Dracula, Sovereign of the Damned. This is a 1980 anime movie uh, by Toei in, in animation, and this one is directed by uh, Akonori Nagora and Minori Ukazaki. Probably you butchered them terribly. Anyway, and um, this is actually an anime movie adapted from a Marvel comic, which is adapted from a novel, which is adapted from a historical character. So let's just talk about Dracula as a whole. In case you are unaware, the character of Dracula is actually a public domain character, which means anyone can use Dracula. Anyone can make their own Dracula story, which is why you've seen Dracula pop up in all sites, all types of media, including Marvel and even DC. So in the 1970s, uh, Marvel Comics did a series of comics called The Team of Dracula. I think this is notably known now for the introduction of the Blade character, but this obviously featured Dracula in a prominent role. Now, confusingly, Dracula in, in Marvel has changed dramatically in, in more recent years, in the last kind of like uh, 15 or so years. He looks a lot different. He, he almost looks like an evil Fabio now. Um, in his more kind of modern appearances and has appeared on various kind of cartoons and things like this and obviously the comics. Uh, but back then he was kind of more of your classic looking kind of Count Dracula, albeit with a uh, moustache, very much like your real Vlad the Impaler there. So anyway, this is probably one Marvel movie I think that very few people have actually seen in this day and age. So in 1980 this actually came out. It actually came out um, with another animated Marvel horror movie the year later, uh, which, is the, which is the adaptation of Frankenstein. So, just to be clear, um, I haven't seen the Frankenstein movie, although apparently that one's going to be quite good. Who knows? We're talking about the Dracula movie now. Now, this is an adaptation of the comics version of Dracula, rather than the Bram Stoker novel. And as such, the story is a little bit bizarre. Uh, which we'll talk about at the, in, in just a second. So, um, the the story focuses on Dracula coming to, have, has come to America because in Europe, basically, he is too well known and in America, people don't know who he is. So that's kind of the reason why he's in America. And he, and he moves to Boston. And um, he... This movie gets pretty dark. has done dark things on it. You've got Satanists... Yes, you've got actual Lucifer in the movie, Satan worshippers. Uh, you've got Dracula actually biting people and killing people uh, with a little bit of animated blood. You even have a scene of a real, a human baby getting a bullet through it, getting shot dead uh, by someone, and a little bit of kind of nudity in it as well. Although this movie, I don't think, was made for adults necessarily, uh, but it's a bizarre mash, mishmash of tones. So anyway, Dracula moves to Boston, and um, he decides, just to kind of mess with Satan, he's going to steal um, this kind of sacrifice, this sacrificial um, offering to Satan, who is this woman, who is, you know, the bride of, of, of Satan. These kind of group of Satan worshippers are essentially going to sacrifice this woman. Uh, and Dracula kind of just turns up, and they just assume that he's Satan. And he still steals this woman away with the intention of killing her. But in actual fact, he ends up falling in love with her and actually ends up having a relationship and eventually a baby with her. This, of course, infuriates Satan, who uh, wants, to, wants his kind of revenge. And uh, we have a various kind of confrontations with these kind of like Dracula versus Satan. Added to the mix 
You've also got a group of trio of vampire hunters, all of whom have are um, originated from various kind of Dracula-related characters. So there's a there's a guy who is actually a, um, a, a distant relation of Dracula himself. You've got a relation from um, Jonathan Harker. You've also got a, uh, a girl who's related to Van Helsing. So this trio basically are the, kind of, are the vampire hunters. The movie actually is, almost has two distinct halves where the kind of the focus of the story changes. So that's more of your first half of the story. Although there is some crossover. The second half um, deals with the, the kind of Dracula having to deal with his now adult son who magically kind of uh, um, gets transformed into an adult and is almost like an anti-vampire. If you can imagine like a... Um, a vampire is like unholy kind of unholy kind of creature. Janus, his son, actually becomes almost the, the polar opposite, like the kind of the, the holy version of a vampire is such. He transforms into a golden eagle rather than a bat, things like this. And um, it kind of focuses more on him and also Dracula losing his powers and becoming mortal again. And probably the most infamous scene in this movie, uh, Hack, uh, Dracula goes into a burger bar and, and eats a burger, basically. Which I think is probably, if they, there is a thing that's most well known about this movie, that's it. Uh, so let's discuss the, 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 what we think of, of this movie. So obviously you have to kind of bear in mind this movie is a 1980s made for TV um, anime movie. So it is a product of its times to a lot of degree but it's such a bizarre but therefore interesting take on the Dracula the the Dracula kind of mythos now interesting there are scenes here that do deal with um Vlad the Impaler side of things and then in kind of a flashback sequence we, we kind of told albeit a you know somewhat sanitized version of events in regards to uh Vlad you know the, Vlad the Impaler and him you know what's ultimately led to his death and then from there obviously the kind of the, the, the stoke and all kind of takes over um but dracula here is portrayed to be a more of a tragic hero figure in a way now it is like i've said the, dracula is the protagonist of this of this movie but he does kill at least a couple of people in the beginning of the movie, innocent people. So we do see him that. So he's, he's not exactly a hero. I guess you would say more of an anti-hero. But he's played because he kind of, in this movie he is kind of falls in love with this with this woman, and this ultimately he feels this then this love. So he's kind of becomes a bit more of a good guy, uh, but not exactly. But it's, we could have known that his character, but prior to this, has not been like that at all. So it's a, it's a weird, but but some you know somehow layered uh, kind of character that Dracula that Dracula has become in this kind of adaptation. So it's it's pretty interesting because Dracula still doesn't like Kevin. For example, when um when his son is, is eventually kind of an adult and kind of face him, he kind of like oh heaven, they're always trying to you know mess my plans up and all this. So um, you know he's not a quote unquote good guy but he's this kind of like uh morally ambiguous guy I mean, at one point we see him defend a couple of children when he's kind of in his human form against other vampires which do appear in the kind of the second half of this movie uh so yeah it's an it's an interesting adaptation and, and kind of you do kind of like feel for dracula a bit in in a way uh because of his kind of like obviously what we know about the character through other media and obviously the way this kind of uh this movie depicts him so makes for Quite an interesting uh, character. Like I said, the, the, there are themes here. Although it's not, I wouldn't say it's like you get adult animation nowadays and in anime as well. And although I didn't think it goes that far, it's the it's the subject matter actually having actual satanists that are called satanists in this movie was a kind of and this is clearly made not for a uh, adult audience. It's made for a, a, a younger audience, but having them called. Satanists and all of this, and you've got to bear in mind when this movie was. When uh, obviously, you know, not long around this time, you had the kind of the Dungeons and Dragons satanic panic and all of this. Um, I found it interesting that there was they would kind of uh, be so blatant with that, and you know, have a have a potential human sacrifice and things like this. And uh, like I've said, there's there's there, there are some adult things that happen in this movie. The, I think the most one to know is obviously a, a, a baby gets shot well, in its mother's arms 
by a Satanist with a gun. Uh, now, that's not the end of the story of that, baby, but uh, that's all I'll kind of say on it. But nonetheless, it, it, it's still quite, uh, you know, has some adult themes for what was a, uh, meant to be, I, I think, a family a family movie. Obviously, something dealing with Dracula is always going to be relatively violent and have darker themes, but I feel this is darker than I was expecting, especially for the kind of the, the time that it was made. Um, for the 1980s, I think the animation isn't bad. Um, there's actually quite a lot of detail in regards to some of the kind of the art style here. Um, Dracula has a very kind of expressive face and some of the kind of the, uh, I really quite enjoyed the scenes where we have like these zombie like vampires that kind of appear in the kind of the, the, the latter half of the movie and kind of the way he kind of um, interacts with them. The movie actually has some quite funny comedy in regards to some of this as well. Uh, so the way that kind of the, when he Dracula becomes in human, again seeing him eat a burger, seeing his uh, kind of other vampires kind of reject him because of this, and almost make jokes about him because he's now human and they kind of like sort of take the piss. It's really bizarre. Um, so what about is there anything negative I can say about this movie? So there there are some stuff like I said. It is, it is definitely a product of its times and therefore has a dated feel to it. There's also a little bit of fat on this movie. Our trio of actual good guys, the kind of the uh, descendants from, you know, Jonathan Harker, Van Helsing and, and Dracula himself, really have nothing to do. It's, it, one of them has a, a role in the movie at the very, very end, but the other two are completely superfluous to the plot and really don't, um, don't have anything to do in the whole movie. They are completely superfluous and, and offer nothing to this movie whatsoever. I only think that they were put in to be good, good guy characters. These are, are again, are, are characters from the, the comic. And even Janus, who is the kind of the adult um, baby uh, of, of, of Dracula, again, although there's some quite fun scenes with him, he ends up being fairly light to the plot and, and, and ends up not contributing massively to it. Now, this being an animation, um, obviously, originally it was voiced by a Japanese cast, but it was it is a Marvel Comics adaptation and therefore was always going to be made to, be, to sell to Western audiences as well. So there is obviously a English-speaking cast as well, and that is the version that I have watched. And I have to say, the actual... Um, the voice work here is terrible. It is really bad. Um, uh, yeah, there are just sort of so 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 many mismatched kind of voice uh, actors compared to the kind of the characters that they are playing. Uh, they, they speak very fast in a lot of instances. The movie is also quite talky. Now, to save on animation, what they have done is there's lots of scenes where people are static talking in a room. And there's just obviously minimal kind of animation on the on the mouth, but then the rest of them are, aren't kind of aren't kind of talking a lot. So there's lots of scenes where not a lot happens kind of physically. Again, this is a technique, so they don't have to kind of animate so, quite as much. Um, so the movie does come a little bit bogged down with too many kind of like talky scenes. Uh, again, just a trick employed to really uh, narrow the costs more than anything else than being particularly kind of character driven. So overall, I have to say, I actually kind of enjoyed this movie uh, because it's so it's such a bizarre kind of like little obscure Marvel movie that I feel it, it is kind of um, forgotten about, even by, you know, Marvel fans and sort of animation fans, um, along with the Frankenstein adaptation as well, which at, of, at this moment I haven't seen. Um, it's, it's worth a look. Uh, it's by no means a great movie, I don't think. Um, it, you know, even by the standards of the 1980s. Uh, and this was probably, this was animated during the late 70s, one would imagine. But it, it's it's certainly an interesting adaptation. And like I've said, doesn't really follow the Dracula book, but definitely has in a, has elements of, you know, that kind of, that and obviously the, the real life of the Empire, along with mainly taking kind of source material from the Team of Dracula comic from the 70s. But thoroughly interesting. Um, so not a particularly great, but interesting movie. I would say this one is kind of, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. I, I can't genuinely say it's a good film, 
but it is certainly a worthwhile watch for any enthusiasts of Marvel or Dracula or what have you. So 5 out of 10, have you seen this kind of rare oddity of a film? Uh, leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.